Real Fantasy Podcast. You can say a little, or you can say a lot. Dreams are what you ask for, real is what you got. Take a few shots with a queen on her life, a rose in the middle. With love on our side It's all a vibe tonight It's all a vibe tonight Make sure you tune Real in Real Fantasy tonight. Podcast right Yo, 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 it's your girl Victoria Rosa <laughs> And listen, y'all, I've been trying to get this beautiful woman <laughs> on my podcast now for two years don't do me too bad two years don't do me too two bad years. this is my lovely cousin <laughs> essence of ebony hey, hey. so hey love tell them hey, where baby. they can find you and tell them a little bit about yourself before we get this podcast started all right all right so i am like she said essence of ebony and i'm a herbalist um mm-hmm. i used to have a fashion boutique so it's like the most I had really put on my heart to do the things that I was doing behind the scenes, which was herbalism, like doing smoothies, creating smoothies, doing things for our overall health. I'm waiting on that shot. <laughs> you definitely can get it. <laughs> so you can find me on Facebook, Essence of Ebony, TikTok, Essence of Ebony, Instagram, same tagline. Mm. And that's just a little short part of me <laughs> so listen she brought something that she personally made for us yes. y'all know typically i drink a little wine drink a little tequila a little, <laughs> little some Hennessy, but she brought something special for us tell us what's in this bottle so we have here some hibiscus we have blue lotus and i think i put some uh holy basil in there okay Not the, holy. the holy basil are you gonna pour us up so i can i can taste yes this? Yes. yes i'm excited about this so with this Concoction, yes. This this herbal concoction. Um, tell me. I want to pour it over there. What does it heal? Anything? Does it? It make does. You, does. So hibiscus. Where well, pretty much all of these herbs are very versatile. So blue lotus is an Egyptian herb. It's Egyptian lotus, right? So it helps with dreams. Uh, mm. It's a very medicinal herb. Um, it can help with sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, in ancient Egypt, like, they used it with their wine to, like, uh, what's the words I want to use? I'm sorry. I just got, I just uh, <laughs> edited this part out. But they used it to, like, enlighten them, like, yeah. for clarity and stuff like that. So, and then you have hibiscus. Hibiscus helps with uh, PCOS. So, if you ever experience, like, any cramping during your menstruation or Ooh, any wee. type of inflammation in your body, it's very, very versatile. So, mm. yes, it does. Okay. And it helps with, like, a mental, like, enhancing your, your brain function as well. Ah. But this whole entire blend. I'm excited about this. And, of course, I know that alcohol, alcohol, <laughs> alcohol come with a little bit of spirits. I'm going I'm to I'm top this off with a little bit of that, too. Okay, we're going to we, <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely going to take that bottle home with me, Ebony. <laughs> So, um, I do want to get into this because I've been waiting to get somebody on the show that's spiritual like me, that likes to learn a little bit more about the spiritual side and, you know, meditation. So, what is spirit? So, what is spirit? Spirit is the most high and then spirit is your higher self. And a lot of people truly don't believe that. Like, when you get to talking like that, like, about your higher self. they am like, mm. Honey, they come <laughs> for you. They come for you. If it ain't, if you're not saying that you're a Christian, it's dynamic. Yeah. You know? But spirit is truly, like I said, the most high in your higher self. Yeah. You know, you're connecting with your higher self. You're becoming one with your inner self. You feel me? Well, and then, I, I, you know, I always say my, my favorite line is, I'm one with the earth. Right. And definitely the earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'm one with the earth. Yes. So uh, to get that, that settled out, we know that spirit is nothing demonic. At it's all. It's one within, one one that's in tune with oneself. That's it. And so what is spirit, spirituality? So spirituality, spirituality to me is just like you said, being in one with the earth, yeah. with the universe, with the most high, with yourself. 
and right. to your ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. people have a problem with that too when you talk mm-hmm. about your ancestors. That's the NAMI. You know, like how is that? But spirituality is parts of like grounding, just truly just being mm-hmm. in tune with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can reach that that Christ consciousness, that God consciousness. You know what I'm saying? So I did I did um a lot of people get their appendix taken out. Mm-hmm. And I heard that your appendix is the one that actually sends the message from your ancestors to you mm-hmm. so why do you think that like a lot of people in the medical field feel like the appendix is getting taken out i feel uh, like a lot of them know this kind out. of stuff you feel what i'm saying but they don't think you know you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so i feel like every organ that we have in our body we need because i can confess that i got my gallbladder taken out but had i known and this was many years ago yeah. but had i known now what i know then i wouldn't have never done that you feel <laughs> what i'm saying because those things can be healed you yeah. need those things but they tell you oh you don't need that you know we have to do surgery you know i always tell the person i say hey Listen, if God put it in my body, it's you there for it. a reason. Right. We're going to fix it. Absolutely. You ain't taking out of me. You ain't taking out of me. me. And I death. hate I did that. So that's why I like to spread my truth and just spread awareness on these things, on how you can heal those things holistically. Yeah. So what are some of the benefits of tapping into your spiritual side? <sighs> I feel like one of the benefits is being able to control your ego because I feel like if you oh, don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is ego? Because <laughs> a, a, a lot of people don't understand what ego is. What is ego? To me, when a person is an egotistic person, it's like they're always in defensive mode. And you can kind of be a narcissistic type person. You, you feel what I'm saying? Like, ego is just like a person with, like, this chip on their shoulder. They're very defensive. It's just like, I don't know, egotistic can go so many different ways. Like, Does But that's it, what it is for me. Okay, so you said um, it's about controlling your ego, so go ahead with it. Okay, okay. So controlling your ego. So I feel like when you are able to control yourself and stay grounded and really go within to be like, you know, why am I responding in certain ways? Why do certain things make me feel certain ways? And you can really truly look at yourself. Everybody can't look at themselves. You feel Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Some people feel attacked when people have just simple conversations like you and I are having. Say if I tell you, you make me feel a certain way, you know what I'm saying? And you listen to me and we can have a mature conversation. Another person that ain't really, that's egotistic or two ain't done a lot of work within themselves. They going to feel like it's an argument when it's really a communication. So I just feel like it's just different levels. It just depends on your perspective and how you look at it. Yeah. We was talking about this a little off camera with a situation I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that has a lot of ego into it Mm -hmm. because I don't understand how could like, and and when I, when I have confrontation with somebody, I try to figure out, but why they feeling like this? Mm -hmm. Because that's not my intent. Right. So how do you like communicate with somebody that, that does that? It's kind of difficult, Megan, in a way, especially if people are not where you are mentally. You feel what I'm saying? If they mental capacity is not where you you know you are, because I feel like egotistic too is self centered. It's just me. You feel what I'm saying? An ego person, an egotistical person, is just they they can only see themselves. They're not seeing things from your your point of view. So you basically, you know, you can have a conversation with somebody like what you're saying, and you could put yourself in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? You can sympathize, but see, you're not getting that in return because all they thinking of is themselves. You get what me, I'm saying? Me, they're me. they're self centered. I feel like this. You make me feel like this. This is what it is. You right. Know? And, right. and then you sit in there, you sit there and try to explain to them like, hey, mm-hmm. no, but you have to understand where I'm coming from. As well. We don't we can agree to disagree, That's but it. we have to have an understanding. Yeah. Like that is that is wow. And man. it can be difficult to do that again if you're talking to somebody that's not there, you know, because we have to be able to put ourselves in each other's shoes. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I have to hear you out. I can't disregard how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You may not be a hundred percent right, but at the same time, I still can't disregard your emotions. Yeah. You, you feel me? Because I feel how I feel. You feel how you feel. Yeah. So let's get to a common ground. You know what I'm saying? So we both can feel better about the situation. Yeah. To understand the situation. So I, I was talking to you a little bit off camera, too. How do you how do you come to terms with things that trigger you? How do you come to terms with things that, how can you not allow things to trigger you? Because I haven't mastered it yet. Because I'm very, you know me. Mm-hmm. I'm a very emotional person. Mm-hmm. I'm a very understandable person. Very. I am 
very forgiving. Forgi- yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> but I don't get that from everybody. Yeah. And people don't understand me like, oh, you trying to be this? And I'm be like, no, that's not the case. Yeah. So, hmm. Ask the, ask the question one more time so I can make how sure I process do, it right. We're gonna, how do you overcome things like this? And how do you, how do you let, how, how do, do you, you not deal, be triggered is what yeah, you're saying? how do you deal with the things that trigger you? And how do you, how are you able to process it so it won't trigger you or allow you to be triggered? Well, what, ha- what helps me with triggers is basically journaling. Mm-hmm. Because the only way that I can deal with my triggers is to really truly see myself and to feel myself through things. You get what I'm saying? Because I feel like if you disregard things, because a lot of us we do, especially when it comes to our family. You know what I'm saying? Sweep it up under the rug. We sweep it up under the rug. We don't deal with it. So it's like, how can you deal with it? And that's a tr- and some things people, they trigger us. So it's like, how can you deal with it if you just sweep it up? Like, this is normal. I've been dealing with this all my life. You let time go by and then you just... You know, right. so I journal to get those emotions out so that I can truly see myself. And it's like too, Megan, when I ground, it's like when I'm grounding and especially like when I'm in the sun, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? The downloads just pour and not just downloads on creativity or what I need to do, but it just really allowed me to see myself on a higher level. Like, hey, girl, you thinking too much that way on this. It ain't even really that deep. Let that go. Like, I'm really, truly seeing myself. I'm really going within to see what I need to do because we ain't always right. You know what I'm saying? And maybe I can address this situation this way. And it allows me to to see the other person, too, because when you wake up, like really wake up. Up, man, listen, listen. A, you know me for a while. You taking a look at how I handle things. Mm-hmm. Do you think that I don't analyze everybody else before I analyze myself? I think you do. I think you always analyze yourself. I just think sometimes you could be a little too forgiving and you continue to allow certain things in your life and see that's where you get out of balance. It. You get what I'm saying? Because it has to be a balance. And that's why things still trigger you because you still allow it. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? I gotta set some boundaries. You gotta set boundaries. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's what it be too. And that's why a lot of people be triggered too, because they don't sit, they don't deal with it for one. And then two, if they do look at it briefly, you still allowing it back in your life. So yeah. that's why it's still triggering you, because you ain't really dealt with it. You ain't setting no type of boundaries. Because people are only gonna do what you allow them to do. So if you keep going back to that same situation, they gonna keep doing the same thing. I guess with me, it's kind of hard to cut cut things off Mm -hmm. when I feel like I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And once you go back to it, it's like, okay, we back to the root one. What Mm -hmm. can I do? Is it it another way or another route or another route that I could take to fix the situation? Right. So I know doing the same thing over and over repeatedly is insanity. It is. It's the definition of insanity. And this is me one-on-one with you. Right. How do I prevent myself from doing that? Doing in, in in your perspective, in my perspective, yeah. Excuse me. Truly doing. Stop repeating the same cycle, thinking that I can fix something if I go. Because you try. can't. You we can't. can't fix nobody else. Everybody else have to. They have to fix themselves. And if you see that that person is not willing to do the work, you feel what I'm saying on mm-hmm. themselves. You gonna have to come up with a decision what's you know best for your life beneficial. and your and, yeah and beneficial for your space and so, your mental health so let me ask you this because i know um spiritually you're supposed to go with mm-hmm. go go with the flow go mm-hmm. with the wind go with one if you can't let that go because you want it to be right so bad mm-hmm. how can you go within to fix that you got to ask yourself, Megan, like, why is it that I want that so bad? Like, is it some type of, like, proje- uh, rejection? Is it some type of love that you really want from that individual? Is it something that you didn't get maybe when you was younger? You get what I'm saying? Because we can desire something from a person, but that don't mean we're going to get it from that person. Right. You get what I'm saying? And if we keep desiring it just for that person to give it to us, we're going to keep hurting ourselves because if they ain't going in again to do what they need to do or to see me the way I need to be seen or to love me the way that I deserve to be loved, I'm going to keep hurting myself because I want it to, to come from this, this, this human being. Mm-hmm. And it may never happen. You feel right. what I'm saying? So it's just like you're going to have to really go within and ask yourself these tough questions like, why do I want it from this person so bad? You feel what I'm saying? 
And you know, like subconsciously, psychologically, mm-hmm. it's not even necessary to say that you want it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel like it's a point to prove, like that's not who. You, stop portraying me to be somebody that I'm not because mm-hmm. it's not me. You're trying to prove that point to that person. Why? Is and it, you can't is that do that. The, is that the ego speaking? And again? that's the ego again. <laughs> you gotta let the ego get self centered because so, it's like you want to show. I want to prove to you that this is not who I am. You painting this picture. That's just like for instance, somebody gossiping about you and they tell lies to other people, but you want to go and prove like they lying on me. But you see, see what I'm I don't saying? care about other people. But when it comes to family, it's something completely different for but me. But to me, I feel like it's the same. I get it. I can. I can get family can be a little bit more deeper. But in my eyes, because we all different yeah. when it comes to this. You get what I'm saying? But I feel like when it comes to my space, when it comes to my peace, I don't care if you're family or not. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm not proving myself to you. I'm not proving myself to right. nobody. You know, you because I feel like family should get it the most. But sometimes they don't because it be the ones that's closest to you that hurt you the most. Because those are the only ones that can hurt you. That's it. Because that's the, you have love for them. Because you got love for them. Yeah. Right. Only people that, that you love can, can hurt, hurt you. you. Yeah. yeah. And that's facts. That's facts. But some people tolerate things because it's family. And I'm just saying it's others that's out here like myself. I don't care if you're family or not. <laughs> If it's not, if it, I'm, hey, it is what it is because if you don't care about my mental health, if you don't care about my happiness and you always want to put yourself before me, you can't listen to, you know, what I got to say. You can't hear me out. It's always about you. Again, that's that ego and it's self centered and that's not right because love is about everybody. Love is, love is everything. Love is everything. Love it's is all life. Love, yeah. is, love is life. Love is everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So mm-hmm. how can you, you, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to take that in perspective and, and yes, it hurt when we depart from relationships. I don't care if it's a friendship that you done had from childhood, you know, a relationship, a family ship. It hurts, but it be necessary. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. Especially if it ain't no growth. And we absolutely, we talked about this. I say, you know, lately, you know, I don't have any friends. Like, I, I, I communicate with a lot of people, but I don't consider a lot of people my friends. Right. And the people that I consider my friends, just out the box looking in, mm-hmm. it's a lot of things that I was like, oh, well, wait, no, mm-hmm. maybe not. Maybe I need to move on from them. Maybe they're not going in the same direction right. I'm going in. But it, it kind of hurts a little bit. Oh, it definitely hurts. Anybody that say it don't, it's a lie. You grieve it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's a because I've I've lost friends that I've had that you couldn't have told me back then that, that wouldn't would be in my life. You feel what I'm saying? And it do hurt. hurt. And I would be lying if I said that it didn't, but mm-hmm. it was necessary. necessary. Pain be necessary to catapult you to your next level because, mm-hmm. like you just said. Everybody's not going to go in the same direction. You may right. be going somewhere higher in your mindset and where the most high is taking you, and they just might not be there yet. Right. And you're going to be draining yourself trying to get them to be where you are. You, you get what I'm saying? You got to yeah. allow people to grow, and everybody don't grow. Mm-hmm. And even though some people may, you know, in their own little way, they may not grow to the capacity to where you are and what you require for your space. Right. Boy, that, that, you speak in facts because in the sense of, like, my boyfriend now, I, he have taught me so much, and I have learned so much from him. And you know, I, I question like, "Hey, how are you able to do this?" And he, and he say the same thing you are. I'm like, "But I can't figure out how to do this." And in me growing, seeing this like, "Hey, if it's not beneficial to you, beneficial to your family, That's beneficial it. to your kids." You can't continue doing the same thing, but oh, it's hard because I'm so emotional. And you attach. You, it's I attached. Do. I attach. You know, <laughs> I got it, an it, attachment it, problem. It, that's what it is, you mm-hmm. know. And don't get me wrong, a lot of us have had that issue and that problem. Like I would forgive people over and over. I mean, you know, I had a situation to where I let. I allowed a person in my life over and over and over for many, many years. Many years and it is yeah. hard. And then, like, when you finally walk away, you hear so many people, even maybe that person, they be like, oh, that's the easiest thing for you to do is give up and, and walk away. But, no, that's really the hardest thing. I feel like that's why I commend anybody that has left a challenging relationship, friendship, or whatever. It's not easy to walk away. It's actually hard. Yeah. That's why you have so many people that stay, and they stay complacent. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's really hard. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you really find that strength to do it for yourself, because your family is the family you created. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I've, I've been I've been reading and I've been learning like at work. I listen to a lot of books, too. You 
portray or you have this image in your mind of the relationship that you would create with that person. Right. So it's you that created that relationship. It's you that allowed that relationship to continue on the way mm-hmm. it did. But the thing is, is your subconscious don't know what's real and what's not. Mm-hmm. So once you create that, how do you break it? Like You have oh, to it feed hurt. it. You got to feed your subconscious. Break my heart. Breaks my soul. Yeah. You have to reprogram that subconscious. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it don't know. So you have to reprogram it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and your conscience is just trying to protect you. Absolutely. Because you, you that's, that's, that's your intuition. That's your mother intuition. That's, uh-huh. that's everything. I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. And you know, like, I know all of this because spiritually, I know, I feel. I always have. But I'm like, it's just a matter of executing it out, I'm and like, it can Wait be a hard. Minute, what if it hurt that was first? Yeah, if it is. and I because you put, still be putting others before you. And a lot of people don't see that, and that's what makes me so angry because mm-hmm. a lot of situations I don't put myself first. You don't, and you don't see this, and it pisses me off. Like, how can you say this? How about can you miss this? Out of all people, mm-hmm. me. Because it ain't meant for them to see it, and it's sad because some of the people that don't see it should be the ones that do. And that's what hurt. Mm-hmm. But everybody not going to see it. And it's not meant for them to. You feel what I'm saying? Because maybe they ain't a part of your overall plan, regardless mm-hmm. of the title of the relationship. Yeah. Again, where you going, it ain't meant for them to go because maybe they going to deconstruct something or, you know what I'm saying, try to dismantle something and in I, your future. You feel what I'm saying? And I just had something that was saying that – um you need to progress on what you got going because something in 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 your life is gonna try to throw you a curveball. Mm-hmm. But you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I th- I think it's more of too. I feel bad. I feel sad. I feel like I can save everybody. I want hope for everybody. Yeah, I want them to love i want them to understand i want them to know it's more to life like i sit here and pray like this person needs to have this this person yeah. is gonna have this and yeah. then i don't feel it reciprocating and it makes me really sad yeah. inside and we've all felt that you know <laughs> <laughs> and then i know it's like you communicate with that person but then when you try to communicate it's like a slap in your fucking face because mm-hmm. it's, it's... You ain't getting nowhere. Mm-mm. It's like you're talking to a big wall. Right. Because, again, that person has to be where you are. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mentally, to be able to receive. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's an exchange of energy. And when Absolutely. you hit in a brick wall and when you hit in and you're talking to somebody that's your, not where you at... Your energy... Man, listen. When, it's going to signal you every time. change the whole atmosphere in your house... You know, you that's your sign right there. You, you feel me? Yeah. And I feel like our body lets us know even before that conversation happens. Mm-hmm. I had made a post a while back, and I was saying, I know what I need to know always before I need to know it. And that means that either the most hot and already showed me, I done felt it, I done seen it. You, you, you feel what I'm saying? Is that what it is when it comes to anxiety and, like, it can be. Yeah. Your body tension up. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Because your body already feel and know what it's going to be like when you walk in that room or when you have a conversation with this person. Mm-hmm. Your body already know. Your energy. Like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Again. Your energy know. Mm-hmm. It already knows. You know what I'm saying? And you keep allowing it. So at this point, it's like, again, like we talked about off camera, that shadow. That's when you really have to look at yourself because it's like, why do I keep allowing this? Because now at this point, I'm just really hurting myself because they ain't showing me that different, especially if you've been going through it for years. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. 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 You may do good for a little while, and you know what I'm saying? Then it happened again, and then you tell yourself, okay, I need to work on this. I know this has been going on. Reg- again, But then you see improvement within the other person. And then and you then, go back. Yeah. Time passed by, and boom, something again. And mm-hmm. like you said, you back at square one again. Square one again. Feeling like, I know, and I never really said this, but, you know, um, dealing with situations with family, I always been passive, so I always been like, oh, shrug it off. Like you said, I never addressed it. And now that I speak up a little bit more, it's like, oh, you don't change. You don't change for the worse. You're not the same person. For the worse? Yeah. I'm not saying we all supposed to change, but for the worse? Exactly, exactly. We're supposed to change and grow. Uh, you're not the same person. Uh, you acting different. You acting funny. You, you know, things like that. And you sit here and look at this person now through the through the glasses that I see now, I'm just like, yeah. 
How can you say that? Aren't you, aren't you supposed to grow in life? You do. You're supposed to grow. We're supposed to grow to the highest pinnacles <laughs> of life. You feel what I'm saying? So we're going to change. And each level is going to require a different version of us. And we right. hear that. But it's cliche for most people. It's not it's cliche. But I feel like it is for most people because they hear it. But it's because they're not doing their inner work. Everybody's not out here healing, Megan. You feel me? Yeah. So that's why they can't understand you, baby. <laughs> They ain't, they ain't healing, you know, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So how can you expect somebody to exchange that same type of love with you and they ain't doing the work? They probably holding on to all kind of mental baggage and things so as well. So when do you let go? When you know it, it's no longer welcoming within your space and within your life. Like, again, if you keep feeling that tension, when it's always something and it causes you not to be your highest self, when you're feeling those low vibrational energies, it's time. Because anything that's love, it's going to want you to propel in life. It's going right. to want you to be your best in life. It's going to speak greatness to you, even if it is a misunderstanding. Me and you can have a misunderstanding, but I still want the best for you. I'm not going to call you out your name. It's not going to be nothing negative about about the conversation and we and, and but i could say with me and you we always be able to have a conversation always about any and anything. anything even any, if we agree or disagree you'll call me you back in the day now we ain't like that no more. <laughs> we got no, you did this i'm like hold on wait no that is not what happened right right is, let me tell you and you be like okay you you took the time right. to actually hear me out and actually understand listen and understand mm-hmm. and that's the thing most people communicate and they ain't listening you get what i'm saying most people just talk to respond uh, they want to be heard to win the argument because they want to be yeah. heard i don't care what you're talking about you gonna hear what i'm saying yeah that ain't no conversation that's a one-sided some right one-sided we ain't conversing <laughs> right <laughs> so i want to get into the herbalist herself Mm-mm. essence of ebony I want to know what was the turning point for you to actually and i'm taking this home i hope you don't mind, okay for you to actually <laughs> Heal, because I know, like, let me see, I think it was 2019, you was a vegetarian. So you and Quella was vegetarian, so right. we had to do the Thanksgiving dinner right, to make sure you guys had. But we ate. Yeah. Right. Everything, onions, mm-hmm. peppers, all of that. Mm-hmm. What was the turning point for you? The most high. Like, I was hearing it in my spirit of what I needed to do, and I feel like we all do. I feel like the most high in our bodies Mm -hmm. tell us what we need to do, and we don't listen. And that's why a lot of us feel dis-ease in our life. And it don't even have to be just from a sickness. Look, it's all sickness. Yeah, Let me take that back. Let me take that back. But you know what I'm trying to say, though. I can say that um, I don't – I I still eat meat. Mm -hmm. I might eat meat once a week. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm not even just saying for me. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, the turning point for me was really my health. And then, too, like, it's always been a part of me, Megan, because before my grandma passed, I just always remember her telling me how she didn't feel a certain way until she got on that medication. She was diagnosed with diabetes when she was, like, 50, right? And they start you off on one pill. And I know it's going to be some people that don't, you know, agree, especially people that's in the medical field. But they started her off, she was like on maybe like one or two medications. And then those one to two medications turned into a whole Three, medicine four. cabinet. Well, you know, like that nine, medications pills. are not made to heal you. They're made to, to treat, you. treat you. Exactly. Um. So. Exactly. You know, it's crazy. I, and I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I do talk about this on every podcast that I have on this season mm-hmm. about mental health and about medication and things like um, you knew I was on a lot of medication. You knew I was depressed. You knew I would call you and be like, why would she say that to me? And I felt like the medication made me worse. It made you worse. What I was. I was codependent right. on it. Mm-hmm. I was drinking. That's I was, the goal. And it wasn't mellow. It mm-hmm. wasn't helping me or mellow me out. It was making it worse where I needed Suppressing this. it. And yeah. then if I didn't take it, my anxiety got higher. Mm-hmm. If I didn't take it, I was depressed or lashing out. If I didn't take it, it was things that I wasn't even addressing with myself. So... Yeah, medication is not good for you. It's not. Mm-mm. Like you said, it, it doesn't heal. It treats. And it's like when you feel an anxiety or when you're feeling depressed, you just don't realize like how you can just ground yourself, do some breath work, mm-hmm. and how you can relieve yourself in a matter of minutes. You feel what I'm saying? I can't wait to get when you call you. When you call that breath and you, you inhale and exhale and just the oxygen that's going to your brain and just mm-hmm. those, you know, yes, you just could, and then you align in your chakras. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 
you can relieve yourself for so much or doing certain movements, whether it's dance or whether it's yoga. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Your body releasing that stress and that trauma. You don't need no medicine. So like like going back to the herbs, mm-hmm. how does that help you with, with within your body? Okay, so herbs for me, and especially when you eat and clean, like when you eat and clean, and even if you eat and meat, even I, if, I could say this too. I don't feel like we have anything clean anymore. Uh, that too, because honey, you have to watch out for the veggies and fruits too. You know, people, mm-hmm. a lot of people just want to focus in on meat, but you got to really, you know what I'm saying? Like if you really ain't growing your own or you don't know where you're getting it from and, and, you I, and you're not preparing like, oh. your veggies right, like if you're not cleaning them, because you, I don't seen so many people, you'd be amazed at people that don't, you know, um, clean their fruit. I wash mine, but it don't be like no in- intensive clean. Yeah, I clean mine. I got to I gotta soak it. I got to, because I mean, even if it's organic or not, I'm cleaning it. Because most people are like, oh, it's organic. I got, you know, number nine. Organic, organic don't mean shit. <laughs> it it's just, don't. It's about where it's grown at. <laughs> you know, right. It's the same pesticides. It, the, you know, like, <laughs> so you still got to clean it. You know, I still clean myself, but I feel like, too, yeah, again, if you're not growing it yourself and you know that it doesn't have all these pesticides and chemicals and stuff, like, come on. Yeah. But when I say, like, just eating clean, but just really just taking care of mind, body, and soul, mind, body, and spirit. Um, oh, it's very different. Okay. What's the difference bes- between spirit and soul? Because I feel like, me personally, your soul is your mind and your body. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's already because it's like you saying the same thing twice, in my opinion. If you're saying mind, body, and soul, I just repeated myself two times. That's just me because I feel like my mind and my body, I feel like that represents my soul and my spirit is my inner self. That's something different. Okay. So that's why now I like to say my body and spirit. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, you want to make sure those three are aligned. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like it's very medicinal. Like herbs have healing properties because like the Bible, if people want to go to the Bible, mm-hmm. Um, Yahweh left the herbs here for the service of man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So, and we know man ain't just man as in man, but you know, it's, it's, the race, the human race. The, the human. <laughs> the yeah. human, right. The because you know how people go man. with that. Right, the yeah. human. <laughs> but, um, and then it can be very spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Because I noticed that when I drink, um, and I have smoked some some herbs, especially my blue lotus. Um, you smoke blue lotus? I have mixed with some other herbs. I ain't okay, gonna lie. Okay, listen, I was like, I might try the blue lotus, <laughs> but if it's mixed with something else, I don't want. yeah, like no, with other herbs, oh. I've mixed it with other herbs. I need to come over. We yes, need to have yes, a session. yes, I we want need to have <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Like blue lotus and mullein leaf, just to throw out a few. with so many little combinations you can do. But anyway. I feel like it even takes me higher in my consciousness and in my meditation and when mm-hmm. I'm journaling or when I'm communing, you know, with the most high, like it in heightens my spiritual gifts as well mm-hmm. when I drink the tea. So, yes, it's healing my body. You know what I'm saying? Flushing out toxins and everything, enhancing me, giving me, you know, increased energy. But it does something for you spiritually as well. And it's mm-hmm. like our ancestors, they knew that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's why they use herbs. It's medicinal as well. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to get into that. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. I'm excited. Listen. Yes, I'm excited too. <laughs> I'm excited too. So how often do you meditate? I meditate as frequently as I can. So, like, uh, my schedule, and I do have a schedule, I get up, sometimes the most high wake me up, so I may get up at 2 a.m., but my alarm is set for 4 a.m., but I may get up before then. But I meditate as soon as I get up, you know what I'm saying? So, do you, you like, um, go sit down? Do you get off the bed? Do you? I do. I get off the bed. I get off the bed. So I may like go in a room or I may go downstairs. And this is like before the sunrise, right? Yeah. Um, and I meditate. And then I may, after I meditate, I journal. You mm-hmm. know, I work out. It's like a whole routine. And then when the sun is, you know, rising, then I would meditate with the sun. You feel what I'm saying? Because your and, body is one with the sun. Yes. And you it's a whole nother sun, feeling. You go with the sun. So, yes. It's hard being a parent and working mom. Yes. And, uh, uh, we have so many wife. roles. It's like, how do you get the time for yourself to do that? And it's like I had to make that time because if we don't, again, like how you were saying earlier, how you do so much for so many people, you lose yourself, and then we wonder why we feel anxiety. We wonder why we depressed. We wonder why our mind is everywhere. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're not taking time for yourself. So you have to call that back to self. That's that self care. You have to make that time. <laughs> so anytime I have time, I don't care. Like, so if you work in an actual job, when you take your break, instead of taking your break and you on the phone or Why using just, it like yeah. idly strolling or whatever, 
meditate. You feel what I'm saying? Or go put your feet in some dirt and ground. Mm-hmm. Go touch a tree. You know, like be intentional. You know, and that's the that's the word. Boy, being you intentional. Crazy. I literally just said tonight when I took a shower tonight. I said everything I do moving forward is going to be intentional. Intentional. Yeah. That's how you find the time. Mm-hmm. You have to make the time. You have to be intentional. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Because if you don't, time going to take over you. Yeah. Well, not necessarily the time, but just things, things. in your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the benefit of actually doing meditation daily? Daily meditation, it keeps you grounded. I feel like it keeps you in check. I feel what, we're talking when about you say ego. grounded, let's, let's come in, folks. What is grounded? Grounding is pretty much coming in one, coming to one with self, the most high, the earth, but especially you, keeping you grounded, keeping you focused on, like, what am I supposed to be doing today? Right. You know, how am I feeling mentally? You feel what I'm saying? Like, just keeping everything in your life in perspective. That's grounding. And then, two to go a little further, grounding actually harmonize, again, mind, mind, body, and spirit. So it has, like, holistic healing effects as well. Yeah. So when you're grounding, like, you're healing or can heal certain things within your body. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because you're keeping everything in balance. Just imagine what stress and everything do to our body. You Absolutely. feel what I'm saying? Because yeah, it's called stomach, disease, pancreas, uh huh, heart problems. It causes all of that. So that's grounded. Like keeping yourself is pretty much keeping everything in perspective and coming into one with yourself and your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. I've been looking up a few things dealing with meditation, mm-hmm. and I actually stumbled across. The energy of Kundalini. Kundalini. So I know a lot of people think Kundalini is demonic. You know they do. They think it's evil. Uh, they think it has to do with Hinduism and all of that. But and it is a part of it is from Hindu. But Hindu ain't it ain't evil. evil. Yeah. So I look as I as I've been doing a little research. Um, the Kindu the the Kundalini. Energy comes from seven cosmetic fires, it's mm-hmm. cosmetic energy, which mm-hmm. comes with the seven so- chakras mm-hmm. that we, it's more than seven chakras, but it is more the, than the main things that we do. It also comes with um, seven principles to all things that's created in life. Mm-hmm. I got uh, seven chakras, the seven churches. A lot of people don't understand that in the Bible, and it actually comes from revelations mm-hmm. that they talk about. The k- Kundalini and then all of that, the chakras meeting it, it comes from, it's, mm-hmm. it's in the Bible. Because people read the Bible, I think, literal. When the Bible is meant to be read, I feel like it's metaphorical, it's messages, and you have to really be able to see behind the, the message. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And everybody not going to see behind the message. So that's why one person can read a verse and see one thing and another one can, you know what I'm saying, interpret something else. And then you got them going at odds with each other. You feel and what I'm like, saying? And if if you take things literal, mm-hmm. you, you you won't really have an understanding you won't. about a lot of You're things. You're missing out. You ain't getting no revelation. That's even like in law, the black law. Yeah. Book. Like if we take things at face value, you don't know what it stands for. Yes. You don't even understand that 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 all stand in the sea, the the court at the sea, the law of the the judges and yes. all of that. A lot of people don't understand. They don't. Because like you said, it's, they, they, they taking it literal when it's so many messages behind the message, but everybody ain't going to yeah. see. You feel me? Yeah. And also <laughs> the, the seven chakras also correlate with the, a lot of organs in your body. And yes. I, can name, I can name a few. Well, the, the, the testes come with the, with the, the um, what is, what's the name of the chakras? Solar plexus. You have your solar plexus. You have your crown, which this the is The crown here. is here. Your, your um, brain. What, what, let's start with the bottom. It's the uh, uh, root chakra. Your root chakra. Root chakra is the mm-hmm. test season, the ovaries, mm-hmm. and it goes around the chakra. The, it's a schedule chakra and all of it. It comes up. It has to do with the body, mm-hmm. the church, the mind, all of that. It's and all connected. It, it is. And people, people demonize like, oh, it. You, you, you don't want to talk about that. Why? Actually, and too, you speaking of the crown uh, chakra, the crown chakra is related to the pineal gland. Yeah. And it's related to the seat on the, the seat of the soul. Mm-hmm. The reference behind in Christianity is the king of our father. Mm-hmm. In heaven, it symbolized the head, the crown. Come on. The chakra. Yes. You hear me? So, yes. like in church, yes. we learn about these things, but we take it as we have took 
what we're talking about within ourselves to a man that we're giving. That's why it says does not don't idolize a man. Don't idolize someone else because Christ is within. Come on. A lot of people don't understand that. They don't. And we can go deep because I even had some speculations. I did a post the other day about shadow work. And I was like basically saying, why do people, you know, look at shadow work as dynamic? Because, you know, I don't know. If they you... call it. Oh, that's witch. I ain't getting. Yeah, no that's shadow witchcraft. Book. I ain't getting no shadow. Yeah, because I was like, what is the controversy with the shadow book that's going that's trending on TikTok? That's just like right. Right. And what they call it. the um... Childhood trauma or you, you know. No. What's the wall that, that, that people do? You talking about the Jericho wall? Or, yeah, that, that Christians do. You write it. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. but I can't think of the yeah. name. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. That's even yeah. with that. That's, yeah. that's a shadow journal. That's, that's a shadow journal. Yeah. It's the same thing. And that's what basically somebody said in my post, like, you know, shadow work is just basically when people are, you know, going inside and you're talking about your childhood trauma, adult trauma, whatever. It's just a different language. It's a different wording. Mm-hmm. And when I say language, I mean just different words. You feel what and I'm saying? I was, I had watched a guy. He was like, we say... You bloody woman mm-hmm. over here in America, but you said it in England, you mm-hmm. like you son of a bitch. That's what bloody me. But it means the it, same it, thing, yeah. right? I'm just using a different word. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But when Christians or when you say, I'm not a Christian, I'm spiritual, you dynamic. No, it's not. It's just I don't identify with that. Especially when you get to really doing your research. And we know that it's 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 a higher being. There you go. We know that it's it's a God. Yeah. We know that we're God bodies. That's it. We know that this is it, but a lot of people don't. But don't when have you that. say that, that's even a problem, Megan. When you say that you are a God or you are a goddess, but in the Bible, it also say I created you in my image. image. So, so if know. I'm creating your image, call me what I am. And what am I? If I'm in the image, if if God created me in the image of God, what am I? We got like <laughs> we got like we, we got like. I'm not we saying know. I am the God because we know who the highest power is, but I am a God in my own right in my universe, in my universe, my world. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, because I create what things you, exactly. What your perception is is what you mm-hmm. create. Yeah. Within your world and with in yourself, yeah. And see, me, I always been a person that like I want, I want everybody to thrive. Yeah, right. I never had a person that I was jealous of. Me neither. I, that's just something I can't identify with. You know what I'm saying? You know. And, and even like, if I what? did feel like a certain emotion, and it wasn't never jealousy, but just like any type of like little feeling that was off, I'm a check myself. You My feel thing what I'm saying? Is I'm like, why well, wasn't including in that? Did you know, I, something like that. that. Oh, something well, like maybe that. Maybe yeah. God said that. It wasn't meant for me to be there. Maybe my intuition yeah. said. And then it's two. We do communion at church, right? Mm-hmm. We have, commun- we have to do communion within our chakras, within ourselves. Even when it comes to the symbol of pharmaceuticals. Yep. The two serpents. Mm-hmm. It's seven serpents that go up your spinal cord. Talk about it. Se- Preach now. <laughs> and that, that we have to channel. Yes. Ooh, girl, don't out. say channeling. You know, that's witchcraft, too. No, is it? Let me stop. Um, girl, <laughs> that's what they say. They be coming for you. <laughs> Does it really? No, it don't. I'm being mm. sarcastic. Mm. I'm saying it rhetorical. Because I say channeling, and here they go. If I say intuitive and not prophetic, it's an issue. You get what I'm but saying? But it's the same thing. It's the same it's, thing. It's just different words. Just like when you say psychic and prophet. You know what I'm saying? That's I feel the like- same thing. The prophet predicted this. The psychic can predict this. Yes. 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 What's the number so about it? So let me, let me ask you about this. Mm-hmm. What do you feel about tarot cards? I see nothing wrong with tarot. And this is what I would say, too. When I was in a church, and I, I don't see anything wrong with church. Because I, I remember you used to like, are you coming to church? Man, you for, know what being in church for, every for Sunday, every Wednesday, like, New no, Year's. I know, Ebony. No, no, baby. I, miss, I did not miss church. Yeah. You already know. But it's like, even when I was in the church, I was so open-minded. And I guess my spirit was letting me know. My higher self was letting me know. You know what I'm saying? I never was judgmental. I never seen nothing wrong with psychics. I never seen nothing wrong with tarot. Because it's people that read tarot that believe in God. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying like not everybody that's doing these things are demonic don't get me wrong anybody can use a tool so what is demonizing things and what is demonic demonic is when you your intentions is to do something the harm, evil to someone wrong to someone yeah ill intentions ill in, I don't feel like tarot cards or anything that, that no. does that no if you ain't doing like no dark spell to kill somebody but you see somebody do think about it let me see 
It's give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. It's hoodoo. People demonize voodoo. They and it's even our people. And that's what's sad. Like how you was talking about earlier, how certain things make you sad because you want everybody to know. You want everybody to grow. And that's how I be too. Like my spirit, it's it saddens for humanity when I see, especially our people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, dang, that doctrination really did work. That you indoctrination. Have you have to think what really the did work on you. And I talked about this a few um, episodes back about. DNA trauma embedded in your DNA yes. that has been passed on from generation, generation to, to generation. generation. Yeah. So it's hard to even try to move past something and go back to your root mm-hmm. because this is what you have in your DNA. That's it. And mm-hmm. you don't have any knowledge to it, so it's going to pass on from generation to generation. If you generation. ain't doing that work, it definitely is. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's just like they do. People do hoodoo every day, but they what is demonizing. Who do is basically when you doing like spiritual work. Mm-hmm. So say for instance, like if I write something on a letter, like you know, if the Most High tell me, you know, you hear most people say, "Oh, God told me that I was going this this bill is going to be paid in full." So I'm gonna write paid in full on this bill, right? Yeah. And then you may get instructed spiritually to burn it, right? You know, if a spiritual person say they was told to do that work or to perform, like send it if in you or don't whatever, put God before, it, yeah, then. then you know it's evil. You're doing hoodoo, but you're doing hoodoo all the time. Like it's it's who do all in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like we're doing the same thing. The wording is just different, and it's something that our people did. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And when you really truly read about it, who do is something that you know our ancestors did to protect themselves from colonizers. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? And that was to protect themselves. So it's like even when we say magic. You know, that's evil. Yeah. How is magic, if you believe in manifestation, well, hell, some Christians say manifestation is evil, but that's in the Bible. But if you say manifestation. You know what's crazy is we were going to get on there Look. right there. <laughs> <laughs> What is manifestation? So manifestation is just basically creating something that does not exist. It's like calling something that is, that is not, you know, calling those things as they are, not as they were. And that's in the Bible, right? Yeah. So if I say that, you know, I want this to appear, or if I'm already speaking like I have this, or speaking I am this person is speaking into existence, that's a form of manifestation. Yeah. You know, and what the Most High gave me, I know I'm not the only one out here talking about it, is is ask formation. You know, people do affirmations. Ask for you shall receive. There you That's go. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible, right? Yeah. So I ask myself, why am I so blessed? Why are things always working out for me? You feel what I'm saying? Like twisting my affirmations as in ask formations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because back to that verse. Yeah. That's manifestation. And when you break down the word form, form is manifestations. If When you form in something with your word, you're calling something that doesn't exist into existence. And they say every word that you speak is a spill that you speak out. That's it. That's it. And that's what the most I did when the universe was created, right? He formed it with the word. Well, I don't like to say he, the spirit, and then that's another topic too. It's a spirit. Yeah. You know, in, uh, divine, Energy, not divine, vibration. but. Uh, feminine and masculine energy is what yeah. I was trying to say. So then I don't like to say yang. he. Yeah. Then you get the yang. Um, and again, it goes to saying that when you speak something into into existence, is vibration. It, it, it is no, vibration. Yeah. That's why you say no. Don't add no gender. Don't add no face. Don't add mm-hmm. no color to it. Right. Because it comes from nothing and into something. That's, that's it. what Adam became. Adam. Right. That's yeah. What Adam. Became Adam. Yeah. So talk that. Yeah. Yeah. We we know that that's where and we can go into a, a little bit more into who came first or who didn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Right. We here. We here. But I want to talk about too the thirty three laws of the spiritual laws of the universe. Mm-hmm. What you know about them? The thirty three laws of well universal laws. Yeah, the, the spiritual laws of the universe. But how you want, how, however you want to word it. So honestly, I haven't really got into the thirty three spiritual laws. I feel like I probably know the thirty three spiritual laws. Sh- share some with me. So uh, before before I share it, it goes into because I did a lot of. Well, not, I'm not gonna say a lot. Let me because I ain't no master to it. Mm-hmm. Chemic. Mm-hmm. Chemic be- begin in Egypt. In Egypt, yeah. The chemic law is basically the laws of the universe mm-hmm. before the laws of the Bible, right? Became one. So I did a few things, and I feel like that's where a lot of the stuff from the Bible came from. Most of it was from the chemic laws because it was our energy, but we're not going. <laughs> but um, here are a few things that um, the spiritual laws of the universe, mm-hmm. which if collectively we did this. 
we will vibrate on a higher, a higher plane, plane, a higher level. Us as one, it don't, it's not about white, black, Spanish. It's not, none of that. It's about a love collective and, and a love, yeah. It's about us just becoming better. One, mm-hmm. as one. Reunite. And that's what Christianity does for me. I feel like crea- Christianity, and that's why I don't uh, identify with it no more, it, it, it judges and it divides. And they Any may not re- see it that that's way. That's what religion, religion was does. Put here for. Yeah. To divide. To divide. Over. So the common people couldn't overthrow the powerful mm-hmm. people, the people with money. Because you're talking about Buddhism, that's wrong, Hoodism, Voodoo. You know, all of these different things is wrong, but we are one. We just do things different, but it's supposed to be that's, all for the collective. That's like, I, I have a conversation with this, too. And I, I, was, I was thinking about going to school about religion, mm-hmm. different religions, what, what, 10 years ago? Back in the day. <laughs> Back in the day when I was... <laughs> anywho, every religion is the same. They just view things a little different. That's it. But it's when you go it's like exactly the, the same. same when you really look at it and yeah. read it and study it. It's the same. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like so. That's why I said you tell me about it because it's okay. like the way the Most High and you have the way and I say because when you start talking about it, I would know. Yeah. The way the Most High used me, it's very intuitive. Yeah. Like things come to me spiritually, and then when I look it up, I'm like, dang, I heard it in my, my spirit shit. already. Things, my shit. Things <laughs> come to me. When I'm around in that energy, yes, like I, and I get energy from every single thing that I touch, mm-hmm. and that's what I hate too because I'm like you're an empath. Oh, mm, mm-hmm. mm, no, mm, I feel mm-hmm. this. No, you can feel. Okay. Yeah, I'm like no. That's why I don't go to funerals. That's why I don't do a lot of stuff. It's that, hard for me now. Mm-hmm. I can't. I used to. I can't anymore because it's too much. It's too much. So, so we're gonna talk about twelve universal laws. Mm-hmm. You ready? I'm ready. The law of the divine of mm-hmm. oneness. Oneness. One within people, one within earth. Mm -hmm. The law of vibration. The law of vibration. Yes. Mm. Yes. Let me say this in my... In your poetic voice. Yes. (laughs) The law of action. The law of correspondence. Yes. The law of cause and effect. Come on. The law of compensation. Come on. The law of attraction. Ooh. The law of perpetual... (laughs) <laughs> Hold on. You good. Transmutation of energy. Yes. The Paul the 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 Paul. The law of rhythm and gender. It's it's see so listen many. to that and you see that and these are all things I talked about, but honestly, me being honest, mm-hmm. I never studied it, but it flows, flows to me. You see that? You see, because I talk about and you one. see my videos. I talk about <laughs> all of this. Pretty much all of that. And I talk about transmutation and alchemy all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yes, like I feel like once you go in with yourself and you vibrate high, like we we really didn't get into good with the kundalini, yeah. but it's just that really tapping into that divine energy. Right. And I can say, and this is the rest of them, the, the 21 universal sub laws, mm-hmm. which I feel like this is like the subconscious yeah. that you have to tap into. Um, inspiring to be a higher power. Mm-hmm. Charity. Compassion. Yeah. Courage. Yeah. Dedication. Yes. Faith, mm-hmm. forgiveness, and that's where that's where it comes to me. I think I forgive so much. It's a way to forgive, though. We can forgive and let go. See, some people forgive and feel like they have to salvage that union, and you don't have to. And I just did a podcast on my podcast talking about. Oh, that. go ahead. Tell, tell, me, <laughs> tell me where I can find your podcast at, because I'll be on there next week, y'all. So right now, I'm just on Spotify. I just got started, but um, it's called Intuitive Conversation. Mm-hmm. So I don't talk about nothing that don't come to me from the Most High. And I mm-hmm. feel like as soon as I get a message, I gotta let it out. And that was one of the things I was talking about: forgiving. Mm-hmm. We forgive. So so that we don't allow those powers or those situations from those people to overtake us. Because right. when you don't forgive, those things and events will replay in your head over and over. Mm-hmm. But some people forgive and feel like they have to stay connected to people or you to don't. that person, and you don't. I can forgive you and let go. That just means I'm dissociating what you did to me. Uh, you feel is, like I'm is releasing that it. Forgive and don't forget. I forgive you, but I don't forget. Yeah, because I feel like sometimes we truly don't forget, but I can forgive and I can forget in a way to the point to where I don't have to keep rehearsing it. Right. So I guess it's all about perspective. You feel me? (laughs) Yes, forgiveness. Because some people can't forgive. And when you say I forgive and I don't forget, but you still replant it over in your head over and over. So did you really forgive? You know? And that's what I be thinking, too. We're going to move on to. (laughs) I be like, did you really forgive it? Generosity. Uh Uh-huh. Grace. Honesty, yes. Hope, 
Joy. Yes. Kindness. Yes. Leadership. Girl, let's talk about leadership. Leadership. Yeah. Yes. You can lead a tribe to water, mm-hmm. to fish. Mm-hmm. Teach them how to fish and they'll be fed for life. Mm-hmm. But you fish for them, they'll be fed for one day. Right. Yeah. That's good leader. So leading to the point to where you're teaching the people that's following you or that's up under your leadership how to do it for themselves. That's mm-hmm. basically what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Non-interference. Mm-hmm. What is that? Non-interference. I feel like for me, non-interference is not crippling a person. You know how like you can have a family member that may have a certain situation. It could be an addiction or it can just be an emotional state and you're constantly trying to save them. Yeah. I feel like when you're interfering, you're interfering with what the work that the most high may be trying to get because it's a yin and yang. It's, it's a yeah, or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Patient. Got to be. Praise. Mm-hmm. Pr- who are we praising? Within ourselves, right? Yeah, within ourselves. Mm. I feel like within ourselves and the most high. Me personally. Goes, but I feel like maybe we need to say that for another day. No, Go ahead. No, Go ahead. no, what you feel like. So, because this is what I, what I feel. And I've seen this topic on Facebook, too, where somebody said, I don't feel like we was meant to praise Jesus, which I like to say, Yeshua. Yeah. Um, oh, I say Yahshua. Uh, Yahshua. How would you Yashua. pronounce it? Pronounce it, but not Jesus. Um, I feel like we weren't meant to. And when you really read that Bible, uh, Yeshua telling you that he was the what brethren. And what is the brethren? That's like a friend, right? Yeah, that teaches. That teaches. He was the example. So you have a lot of people that that's like how, you know, some churches may say you don't you shouldn't pray like Catholics. You shouldn't praise Mary. Why are they praising Mary? But it's like, why are you praising Jesus? You feel like Jesus was the example. And you feel what, what I'm Muslim saying? Thinks. Muslim thinks that Jesus came down to teach a word, but they don't think he was the prophet, which means that we learn from this person. Do as you see, mm-hmm. not what as you heard. So right. You learned that I've, because he was a regular man, but right. to be honest, he was a man mm-hmm. before he. I feel like he was a man with spiritual gifts that a lot of people didn't Until he now. walked mm-hmm. the desert, until he was hungry mm-hmm. and had those, uh, didn't have water. Mm-hmm. That's when he was brought down and enlightened to tell us what we needed. So do you believe was. Jesus was God? Because you know how that's in the church, they teach that, like, G- God was... God, Jesus, and everything. God came into Jesus as man form, like, but it's I, supposed to be the Holy Trinity. Me, I don't... That don't make sense to me. It, not at all. And I always ask that. That was I two always, separate... That's two separate entities. Like, Jesus the was the man. The Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, and God is the most high, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I feel and like... my son, I come to you to teach... To, to, to wash all the sins away for the common people. Mm-hmm. God can't wash itself of sin for the common people. And that's people. even another topic. Oh. But I feel like <laughs> but I feel like just Yeshua was a spiritual being like most spiritualists are today. Mm-hmm. Yeshua worked with the elements, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Metaphysics, astrology, all of that when you really pay attention. Absolutely. And that's why they demonized them. That's why and who demonized them? The they church. Did. That's why church was here to meant to separate and divide. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna talk about that on your podcast because we we oh, we'll say that for another topic. Yes, okay. we okay. gonna we gonna do all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but responsibility, mm-hmm. self love, self love, most definitely, thankfulness, yes, and unconditional love, yes, because people love with conditions. And that's why it's so many issues. And it can go along with what you were talking about earlier. Am I wrong to say that I feel like only mothers know unconditional love? No, you're not wrong. Because I feel like, I ain't going to say, not all mothers show unconditional love. So I may have to <laughs> no, agree I'm to. No, I'm not going to say all not mothers. Not all mothers, but, mothers. but I can kind of coincide with you on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think a, a man can unconditionally love a woman? Honestly, your honest opinion. My honestly opinion, do I feel like a man can? I do. You know? I do. I feel like a man that truly has done work with himself and know who he is and truly in himself, he can definitely unconditionally love. Yeah. Yeah. A man that has not done no type of work, no type of soul searching, is not in tune with his higher self, no, how can he love you unconditionally when he truly don't know himself? Yeah. And that goes so, with anybody. Yes, because you have to be selflessness. You to, have to love unconditionally. If yeah. not, you're going to love me with conditions. And that's why people don't be equally yoked, if you want to bring that word up. Ooh. 
Because they, they in their relationship you. conditionally. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as something don't benefit them. It's like, I, 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 It's I, an I, issue. I, or you don't, you don't, you don't. So yes. it ain't no un in it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to be perfectly yoked. You have to understand that your life is mine and my life is mm-hmm. yours. So I am letting you know that the experience that we have, anything happening to you is happening to me. Right. So I don't think a lot of people get that. They don't. A lot of people don't get soul ties. They don't understand it in the, in the depth so, of that. Soul ties, you want to talk about that, that has a lot to do with sexuality and mm-hmm. sexual. But yeah. it can affect everything else, too, that we're talking about. Yeah. Because y'all connected as one. Like you said, I feel what That's you feel. That's cheap and fucking people. Yeah. yeah. Unprotected and the, the, the heart injected into the vessel of life you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's that that's the topic we can talk about too <laughs> but i do want to thank you miss of course I, of it. I really enjoyed this this is like what i love to talk yes about. it was what so satisfying people, it was it yes very <laughs> <laughs> and then this blue lotus got me over here on cloud nine <laughs> yes. i'm ready to go to sleep and have a good day at work i don't know my kumbaya you yes. know what i'm saying <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. I can't wait to do yours. I'm yes, excited I'm excited. About excited. On there. Can you tell everybody again where they can find you at? Mm-hmm. How to get these recipes for these smoothies. Okay. How we can tap in and even tune in with you because you be on TikTok doing your yoga and I all do. of that. I do. Even, y'all know what's amazing, y'all. <laughs> Her daughter just had a baby. Yes. She concocted something Doing her herbal thing <laughs> to help her daughter produce breast milk and for I mean her fast. Child. Yes, so I want them to know where they can find all these recipes or if they need to buy your book because I know you're coming out. With I a have book. three books, three ebooks right now. Yo, yeah. she already got them out. Tell yeah. them where they can find all yeah. this. So, can- so I have a website on my link with all my digital products. I'm looking to this camera, right? Yeah, either or. All okay, of them. okay, all okay. Of them. So yes, so it's on my in my bios. So you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. IG, all same hash, uh, hashtag, which is um, Essence of Ebony. And all of my links are in my bios. And pretty much when you click on that link, you're going to have everything. My yeah. podcast, my social media platform. So if you're one, you can pull up all. And um, I have recipes, uh, mocktails, smoothies, juices. And I will be coming out with a cookbook soon as well. I'm excited because I'm like, yes. hold on. I called you. I'm like, where the hell you find the mushrooms at? Because I can't find them. <laughs> go to Whole Food. I go to Whole Food. They don't have them. I'm like, you didn't. Hey. You didn't find them. I could find jackfruit. I couldn't find the, the big mushrooms that you had. No, really. Yeah, sprouts. All the places I. You, you probably just went to one. No, I went to Whole Foods and Sprouts. Sprouts is all, all the way down Woodruff. Yes, on Woodruff. That's where I go. They ain't have it. Dang, mm-hmm. them the places I go to. I go to the Fresh Market, Whole Foods, Sprouts, um, Publix. Publix. That's my favorite store. They don't yeah, they be. Have what? Dang. They have the big mushrooms, but they don't have the big ones that you know. Well, yeah, that's why I got them. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, I want, but yeah, I go in there. I'm like, I want some of that. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna have to cook for you. Yes, I yes. love it. <laughs> yes, I do need another some more reviews. So yeah, definitely check me yes, out. Yes. Check me out. I'm always dropping daily gems. Yes, she is, and this is Essence of Ebony. Y'all can find her on all platforms. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in to. Real Fantasy Podcast on I Say Podcast Network, and we out. Real Fantasy Podcast. You could say a little, or you could say a lot. Dreams are what you ask for. Real is what you got Take a few shots With a queen on her life A rose in the middle With love on her side It's all A vibe Tonight It's all A vibe Tonight Make sure you do Real Fantasy tonight. Podcast